parts of it are the mechanisms that we have to ensure quality standards and content creation adequacy. Before we get to adequacy, I'd like to hear if someone who wants to say wants to comment on what standards we employ right now when we talk about measuring adequacy or uh, adequacy of quality of content. We as the general population and in India and enemy ICT, you can take whichever level you want. There are no standards in content creation. I, I don't see. But I don't there, 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 there should not be. No, there should be standards because you know what you can develop them, that's fine. No, 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 use the Actually, regarding the requirement, there can be any standard, but uh, presentations or delivery mechanisms or etc. or other issues. Uh, it depends upon the people who are developing the thing because there are so many ways you can explain. Structure, some, we can try to make uh, structure. You can explain so the introduction, thing. objectives, etc. Et so those, those structures. So uh, structures are, that is a standard practice. Structures. Structure of this. Are you going to give any comment on the content? But structure, structure can be standardized. It has, many people have worked on that. We also follow the same thing for teachers training programs. We follow a particular structure. But so far as the content is concerned, it depends upon the individual who is developing that. Okay. Okay. So the point I wanted to make was that, you know, Pearson has an organization, they're, they're a large company, but they new CEO. One of their focuses is around learning efficacy. So when you produce a content, you know, you test it out, just like you would a product, and you, you say, does it help? Know, learning outcomes. Validation and yes. if it doesn't, so there is a sense of quality you could have in terms of Those how well like does a piece of things I or fully agree. Yeah. Fully yeah. agree. Yeah. And so structure, the the you must achieve the objective, but if it doesn't, then you yes. can say. It must have certain structure, objectives, etc. What are the requirements of an average student of that level? <laughs> I think what Professor Ray was saying, if I have the name right, you know, so about competency, then setting objectives first, and then making sure. Actually, actually, in NITT at Kolkata and elsewhere, there are four NITT in the country. We follow the same structure. We start with the introduction, then the learning objectives. Objectives are driven from the in, in terms of the students after the training is over, what they will be able to do, etc. Then go to the explanation, then more, uh, more uh, small, small, small chapters. In fact, okay, and then we uh, set some questions, the evaluation of the questions, all these things are to figure. That is the structure. So, so the, the, if, if some standards are required, that identity has uh, taken together, yes, we, we, we can provide a standard for the structure. Yes, uh, we, we do, we, that we, is our bread and butter. For the uh, mechanism, if you, if we Suggest some mechanisms that then uh, we have been doing this. We are in this business for last I mean, the years. One point you must include that what shall be the format because we have to out of this deliberations we have to uh, fix certain standard of content generation. Right. So technology may be different. Right. You you must have some audio, video, and anything. But what will be the ultimate uh, learning outcome of that particular content? And the module is to be identified. Otherwise, this sort of discussion will not be any meaning well. at all. Let us deliver it on that what should be a common format for generation of structure. content. Structure. 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 Because this point does not really one meaning, and we have already discussed four or five points so far, which uh, does not carry meaning uh, at all. I, I, I mean, honorable sir. No, I give you an example. Man. Just yes, sir. Very quick thing. For instance, video. Yeah, you know, you can, uh, See, video is a tool you are incorporating so there is a for. Standard, there is a quality standard that we are talking about. No, no, let me finish this. Yes. If you take it with a web camera, which is all of us have from your laptop, and you grab a, a lecture and bad lighting, it's very different from a studio recorded video. Yeah. So that is what we mean by defining standards. What is acceptable for the enemy ICT? Isn't that something that you can take from your room while discussing it on your laptop or should we have studio standards? Let's oh, stick with certain things that are recommendations. That is the now, quality standards. This, this makes a difference. If you say that laptop-based video is acceptable, anybody can contribute a laptop-based video. If you 
we say a studio based thing, they have to go down to the studio to collect it. So just a quick comment. Khan, the total cost of the setup that South Khan uses, I've gone and seen it, it's around $200. Okay, it's a good microphone. He believes video is distracting. Actually, that's why he does audio only. And he uses a ordinary laptop to use it. So, all I'm saying is we have to be careful in terms of studio versus non studio. Yeah. I think mean, it has to so be. That's not Okay. Let's not say that standards That's are there. Yes. If you have everything available, eventually the best will be selected. Okay. You're only going to look for good quality in video. Great. Eventually, what you argued about form and substance will come up. That's what we want is the best content. Yes, sir. Uh, I think the first thing is of the quality, uh, the standard of the quality of the content is concerned. The first thing is the competency of the resource person or the teacher involved. How the teacher are selected, how the teacher are engaged. I think that's what the first parameter. Uh, the competency of the teacher, the transparency in selection of the teachers, how they are in uh, the resource person. That comes the first thing. The structure comes later on. And the structure there's agreed by all the, the, the four quadrant of the <coughs> selection of the resource person, then structure of the, 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 uh, the content, and then the certification and validation. Student feedback also plays a big part. Uh, of course, the student's uh, feedback. The, uh, the certification and validation, we at CEC, I am director CEC, which is involved in the content creation at the government level. We are, we are creating content uh, uh, for it, uh, on 87 undergraduate subjects right now, e-content. And we are following the four quadrant approach. We are following this uh, the, uh, the rigorous method of uh, this validation and certification. We, we are doing certification and validation at two level. The first at our production center level, then at CEC level, uh, we involve uh, the user group as well as we involve some outside experts at CEC level for certification and validation. So okay, this, this is the part. Some area, the students are locked up today. They are unable to understand the reasons for such kind of things. You should, you should uh, see that. I think basically the, you, are, you are creating content for the students. If they are not able to understand the content, then, 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 then the test comes there itself. No, the students never always should understand. Because we take the ideas of the students. Ideas of the students, they don't require... I am not, not talking about... Yeah, I am not talking about... No, 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 I am not talking Go outside of IIT and all the way in K. What is the bandwidth available for a person to approach and in the type of content? So apart from structure, format, two things are very important. The competency of the teacher, uh, yeah, there should be a mechanism for the level. Can I leave that out of this note? Hmm? Because it's again a subjectivity. You have to give me a standard where you judge the competency of the teachers. Uh, I but the so. other methods that you, what you mentioned, since you're developing content, you mentioned the standards that NBICP and you. I think that it, I agree. The competency of a teacher, you know, if you mind, we can do it. But uh, the rest are very useful because, uh, to be honest, I didn't know what the standards were. And if you're developing content, they obviously pass through. You have something more? Oh, I, th I think we left it to the last part. Is it possible to enforce quality standards through crowdsourcing as we keep PDRs now? I think it is. Uh, do you yes. have any objective to that? I mean, a objection to that? Is it possible, to, possible to, uh, to enforce quality standards through crowdsourcing? And, and, yeah, and, and, and if you want to object to it, then why? I would like to say to access again. We are always trying to limit ourselves to the thinking that we have all access to this information. What about colleges or people, content creators outside of places where there is less than 40 kbps access available? What is the concept of Wikipedia there? And if you want to expand content to spread for these people, the content you create should also take care of the infrastructure present. So and I think so, works uh, within the building. The take care in the first part. Uh, we'll come to that in point number five as well, because yeah. that, 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 that's not relevant with standards for content, unless you think it is. So it is because what we can do is, that, like Dr. Anup told, we can create standards for tools to be used for any content creator to use it. Rather than saying this content no, but we do have that. For instance, the radio, for instance, can modify its resolution based exactly. on the band. So right? we should create tools and give to the content creator to utilize it, rather than saying it should be focused with this way. 
in some places i can have a, a content which is not the problem i don't that uh, i say that uh, but uh, the but i just have the standard we should be sure that we have a skill this is actually what we are talking about so this is chapter xyz they will start with the introduction they will we will write the learning objectives this structure we follow and then chapter explanations then chapter explanations as the examples and questions then the evaluation Okay. So, this is actually again the form of a particular yeah. content. So what we are talking about is content creation. So that's not the main issue. Because the fast changes in technology, there's need to upgrade existing content. With the presence of various delivery mechanisms, what methods are required and what are the methods that we would employ to keep the content updated? And I think to that end, the point that you were making about taking into account the existing infrastructure and then factoring that in when you speak about you know updating content, I think that speaks more closely to five that is also But um, any other comments on mechanisms to employ when you're talking about updating or updating content? <laughs> Can I can I join the discussion on this? Uh, we are all used to reading books. I mean, people of my generation learned from books. It wasn't so much a digital. What is the change in the book in the content? That the next generation of learners requires. We're talking about a change in the technology and require to upgrade the existing content. Now let me go back into the way that I normally read a book. We normally mark it if we own the book. It's a library book, of course, we don't. We make short notes in an, in an added notebook. Essentially, in a computer terminology, what you're doing is you're marking up this particular content. Now that is possible with books. I'm just giving you that as an example on changing content and how it will be used for the next generation. Can you use that line as a discussion thread to give us solutions for this particular answer? There's a need to upgrade the existing content. Given there are different types of delivery mechanisms such as video, printed books, and various types of e-content, including e-books, what methods are required to keep the content that's the Isn't it possible to integrate all of these? If the next set of books that come out are um, have QR codes which link it to the video videos that are available, or to paper further reading that one wants to do, uh, you you can always have links to each other. So that is the only way you can update content. And if new methods of types of information are, are available, why can't they be integrated to the existing another ones? example. Very often from common libraries, take the British Council for instance. You take a book and you have someone else's markings on them. They're extremely irritating. But they're not what you want. It's something, perhaps something else. Exactly. Now this is also are, the problem with sharing integrated <coughs> content. You have the choice to scan the QR tag or not. Do you? If there is a QR tag, yeah. you have to scan it. Then it gives you <coughs> scan something else. Right. Yeah, unless uh, you want to look at it, you won't look at it. Okay, no, the problem with mashups can be that they can be too mashed up. <laughs> what I'm going to say is, you know, if you look at content not as a book, not as a video, you know, a modern website is content. It's hyperlinked, it's everything else, and all the rest of the world and businesses keep their websites <coughs> up to date by adding additional content, adding new types of content, something gets updated, you know, moving it out, <laughs> substituting it. You know, so we already have the flexible the web and HTML and all these things are actually really content types. And why isn't learning content? You know, it's just not that single video. It's really, if you think of it as a website, things are continuously going in and out. You know, specific tools can making updating specific things more easy. So you know what I talked about in the morning. If you you know do as a PowerPoint video, you want to add new examples, you add a couple of slides, publish it again. So you, specific key tools can help us find people specific people, but it's it's really a website. A content is a website, and just like people keep websites up to date, you know, uh, you can just, discount. Just to I think 
content to be created so that it will be on the basis of form and substance selected by a large amount of crowd. Well, no, I think you should have standards. Yes, yeah. but what are the standards? Well, in E3, it should be on the basis of form and substance selected by a large amount of crowd. Well, I think you should have standards. Yes, but what are the standards? Well, in E3, it should be on the basis of form and substance selected by a large amount of crowd. Well, I think you should have standards. Yes, but what are the standards? Well, in E3, it should be on the basis of form and substance selected by a large amount of crowd. Has the exact reader to the problem. So we'll have to put it in as another e-book. E I'm saying that that's what we publish what they're doing at the e-book 3. The e-book 3 is in e general. It's a business choice they have made. Mm. Um, okay, so I uh, think. So should it, e 3, since we mentioned the standard? Okay, so question number six is easy enough to pass since we didn't know what four quadrants methods are. Can you generate? Content from any of the quadrants automatically? The answer is quite simple. Yes, the answer is that you can easily generate from voice text and from text voice. You can use the self learn. Before quad content, content you should take as uh, text content to be complete. You if I understand what the four quadrants are? As Daniel just did it, it's audio, video, the whiteboard, and you have text. I think. They so said animation looks like audio, video, audio, or both one. What, 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 what group? They are only audio. They are just for question here. Can you define the four quadrants? I think these four quadrants are not quite. Question here and feedback part will be there. Which it is. And you said actually in director CC. Uh, we are, as I told you, we are developing e content on the 700 subjects. Uh, the project is uh, given by NASNT. Uh, uh, we are developing e content for uh, this uh, four quadrant approach. Uh, this uh, four quadrant approach, the first quadrant is textual document, PDF, e books, illustrations, documents, contains activity, and is required simulation. This is first one. Then second one, <coughs> video and audio content in an organized form, including graphics and animation. Then third quadrant, web resources, related links, Wikipedia, development of course, open content on internet, case studies, then anecdotal information, historical development of the subject, articles. This this uh, this include in the third quadrant. Then fourth quadrant, multiple choice questions, problem quizzes, uh, assignments, solutions, online feedback through discussion forms, setting up the FAZ, and clarification of general misconception, etc. This is the uh, fourth, uh, fourth quadrant. And this is uh, divided into self-learning assessment, kind of the, the fourth quadrant is self-learning assessment. And the third one is web resources. And the first quadrant is the text resources. And the second quadrant is Visual resource. This is how the four quadrants are based on. So the third one is web resources, which is links, links, articles, open content on the internet, case studies, including electoral information, historical development of the subject, including articles. Okay, thank you. Anyway, uh, comments on being able to create one <coughs> or the other. Uh, audio video content is easily creatable, but being able to create uh, question answer sessions from the content are not very easy. Is there any automatic automation here? The emphasis is more on self learning the kind of a material, which is uh, the fourth quadrant. which in, include multiple choice questions, problems, quizzes, assignments, solutions, then feedback. But it's also a graduation. It's a kind of a self-learning as well as uh, evaluation kind of a uh, approach. The fourth one. And uh, this point raised in, in the form of the feedback, in, uh, this focus more on this uh, self-assessment kind of committee. Now there are two questions. Can you generate one quadrant from the other? That is a separate issue. And the second is that? I am answering the second one. The 
second one is can you precisely define the requirement of the board process, keeping in mind says the so yes. your point is that there should be much more of a focus on uh, problem solving and evaluation based methods. There must be some linkage between these four quadrants, otherwise it's very less. The focus would be more on self-learning kind of <laughs> But can you give some examples? Self-learning for video for instance. Uh, See, multiple choice questions are there, the quiz is there, the is a kind of a self-learning and a kind of a assessment kind of a thing is included in the content creation. Some problems are given and those problems are... Uh, so this is what I wanted to share with you. I don't think you can share it with everyone, but she, yeah, you can describe it and then you can give them the site. They have a... Okay, here we have uh, at Century University we have launched standards as a new form of pedagogy and we have created content for engineering, management, training, ITI and uh, we have many options here and as uh, Asan is discussing it is uh, completely a self-learning package. We have uh, lecture notes, we provide the students lecture notes, PPTs, solve question banks, assessments, flashcards, and <coughs> any additional information that can be provided by the facilitator. And uh, the students have given excellent feedback on the assessment option. The teachers can create as many quizzes as they want. And the students can take n number of quizzes, n number of exams, n number of tests. And that helps the students to improve the performance. And this is how we also prepare the students for tomorrow, because there are four important skills digital skills, communication, creativity, and uh, another option, collaboration. These are the four skills. Every teacher, while facilitating, has to concentrate on these four skills. So this is one of the options which helps the students and the facilitators to be in tune with the time. This is at the school level. Pardon? No, no, this is for engineering level. Can for the school level also we have to do it. Can you also just jot down those four points so that you can put them in those four skills that you're looking at? Because they go beyond the present quadrant method that we've been stating. Does anybody have any other points that can go beyond? Uh, knowledge representation, I would call it, or concept maps maybe. Uh, is one way of knowledge representation because what we need uh, is a way to tie up all the quadrants. So we need a syllabus and we need a some kind of knowledge representation. But some, but some that's, uh, knowledge representation. That, that's that's actually a very useful point. Uh, I feel that the content is actually not easily matchable unless you have a knowledge representation. Exactly. It is one thing like a mind map. Anything like a mind map. A concept. And also, if you look at the Khan Academy, they have a structure of dependencies, three lectures, and other things. It's largely the same in this, this kind of form. Exactly, exactly. So I, that's, that's great. Thank you. With the help of mind management, we can create that concept. Yeah, design. Okay. Next is the existing model is largely project based assigned to faculty and academic institutions. Such faculty do not have necessarily, sorry, such faculty do not necessarily have the required competencies in terms of instructional design in related areas. What kinds of efforts are needed to upgrade their skills? So yeah, we have to go is this the one that talks about competence in asking for a faculty? No, this is of the knowledge, but uh, this is an issue that I face. <laughs> Instructional design is not what we were taught in our primary domain and subject, and only if you do something like a BI domain. So, uh, here, my response to this question actually also connects to the models that we talked about right in the beginning. I think one thing that's missing in these models is some sort of pedagogical model of content. So, we've been focusing a lot on the technology and uh, domain, but uh, for example, what Anup mentioned earlier that uh, we have games and simulations, we have videos. And there are, uh, there are guidelines connecting, for example, the learning objective level to what type of media one should choose. And so there are several of these guidelines present. And, uh, if such a guideline document <coughs> is available, it's a guidelines and recommendation level. I don't think we should make it very strict standards. But for somebody who doesn't know how to begin, such a guidelines document would be easy. Uh, would, would help. And uh, one thing we are planning to do in this regard is uh, the new MOOCs that are going to be rolled out, which Professor Patek mentioned. 
we are planning to do one on uh, how to create a open and how to use a mode, similar to the EDX 101 for the context. So I don't know. I'm giving you my example yeah. that I have zero experience in instructional design, but our university is a very different kind of university. My teaching mode is limited, and we have much more interactive classes than the kind of teaching that you all use. So it doesn't really matter. I can always shift my lecture on the fly to another topic that I know. That's why the knowledge representation becomes important for me and for my class, because we can go according to the flow. When you have a strict curriculum-based course, then how do you design your content? And as teachers or as administrators, do you feel your teachers have these skills? I think not. I think instructional design is an extremely important part of any teaching curriculum. Yes. In any teach the teachers curriculum, so to speak. And instructional design for digital content is even more different than for face-to-face. -face. So the, the short answer is no. The long answer is how. And is it the solution by teaching teachers? No, I, oh, it's through workshop and training, I think. Can I, can I ask? Yes, I please. Forward from what you do. Uh, when PhD is becoming mandatory for future teachers, why can't instructional design, basics of instructional design, be a course for the PhD students itself? No, uh, I think when you're teaching, you have to learn this, and this changing technology. The basics of it. The basics of it. When I'm not even aware of what is instructional design, create and require. At the PhD, doing the course level, I can get aware of what is to be done. Now, I know from UGC's requirements that uh, an academic staff college for upgrading skills, one of them has to be on IT. The problem I know from our own academic staff college, I know it's not good to run down the university like KU in public, but they don't know enough IT to teach them. So you see, this is, IT also this more of IP, use of the creation of digital content is missing, and this is a skill that is missing even at the upper level. So it has to actually disseminate from. So, for example, a lot of people are the UC has recently taken the initiative by bringing CEC as well as as, as you are pointing out, academic staff college together for the orientation of teachers for the, uh, this ICT. Oh, are we going to allow X, X number of faculty to create the content on a particular topic or we are going to our recommendation. See, let me go back to this. The problem is that there has been a broadcast mode from the IITs to others. So there was no other content. Okay. But there are very good features in this. There are different places. So if we democratize content creation, then we will also showcase the teaching ability of people who are so far not visible. That's the bottom line that we want to get to. But the future of content creation is not just about democratizing this so that every teacher is, has a space to make themselves visible. It is also about what are the tools and policies we need. And it's not very easy to predict the future like I started saying. Yeah, it's already happening. In fact, uh, so the answer is that you need post. to have <coughs> capacity building of teachers in ICT also. Yeah. And uh, I'll come to you and get some more inputs since so that that's on. Okay. So what are the pros and cons? By the way, actually, uh, I should have asked Professor Anjali Singh to introduce his institution a little more because you're from a technical space and he's in the UGC space. He develops a lot of the content that we use in universities which are not in universities. But, uh, they have a lot if of you allow me, I can do a five-minute five minute. Yeah, I'll definitely give you, but uh, I have this obligation to try to yes, yes, questions. Yes, yes. Okay, finish. the pros and cons of outsourcing some of the development work, such as translation and dubbing. Not of course. Not of course. Quality, speed. Should yeah, not be. The cost not be more than the cost of uh, producing the dubbing. Oh, there are many. There are many. Okay, so I can come to you for some pros and cons. If you're not yes. coming down to 17 people, so people will have a chance. Content creation should also be something that <laughs> can be... Yeah, why, why are you not a multimedia content creation? That doesn't say it there. Mm -hmm. When I do the translation dubbing, it also ensure that these translation dubbing are done to have a learning mode, having more learning process, it should not affect the employability issues. Sorry, can you repeat that? The translation activity should be focused more on making sure the students get understanding of the content rather than the not be on hardcore translation because that will affect the employability 
in the larger scale. No, but there are general areas where there is no teacher, so there has to be a translation of the content. It is meant for the learner. That, that's the whole basis of translation. Okay, so there is a large and vibrant private sector. Is there any possibility of leveraging the expertise in that sector? I'm taking a step out here. I come from a very leftist university, so they have a guide this particular question. <laughs> Multiple partners can be taken, it is good. Depending on a single partner, this happens. Why don't you use the
So how can you use it then? I brought it to this point because I know that teachers in colleges will be accused of telling their students to go and watch a video and not take the link. So that's the flip side. How will you use high quality content from outside and integrate it with the teachers' ability to teach? Well, I don't agree with that teachers will be accused. In fact, they should be sent by making the class more interesting and the data general of this is update. Because we were, for example, a course on optical duplication, optical fibers, and suddenly a class was shown a video uh, of a manufacturing facility. And that, that came out on outside. Those are the first points, but we don't have enough teachers, but a good proportion of our teachers that are present don't teach. We, don't teach. <laughs> we have to be honest about it, that there's a problem with this concept of a teacher. And there is a public perception of a teacher as a person who shirks work. And I was accused of being a person who works half the day, half the year, but we have such long duration. These are the kind of perceptions you have. I'm giving you this from a teacher. So how will we use it? I tell you, if we have a mashup, or we have some sort of a policy which allows a blending of courses, and the content that is from abroad that we are using, is allowed as part of our syllabus, as part of our curriculum, then it will be fine. No, uh, it must be actually supplemented. There are two parts of it. What you were saying, a part of the curriculum, I'm saying supplemented. Uh, for, you know, I need a faculty in between. I'm not saying that I'm going to learn everything from there. What I'm saying is, our faculty are saying that now we can supplement our material with that because the fundamentals have not changed. The content is just so Yes. I, I was saying that you blend it in, so yeah. that you have a blended classroom where you blend it, but you also redefine the content that can be allowed. Uh, in some cases, a local teacher might be able to do a good enough job. But there are a lot of positives in having a teacher that has the skills to do it. Why do you want to replace something that is not? Yes. Yes, it is a good should we promote the use of open source software and education? Yes. 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 It also comes at a general percent. Can you tell me why? It's a sustainability because see, Microsoft is a seven year thing and throw it on license. Yeah, here's the flip. I'm a very, very ardent fan of open source and I use it. I work with it. But in authoring tools, open source is way below what you can get from, let's say, ad hoc and what you can get from, even the platform that Microsoft is such a story about. We are talking about content creation. Maybe a majority should find it for developing open source, good open source for authoring tools, that's a permanent So I say that it should be promoted, but it should not be non-exclusive. Yeah, yeah. So that's yes. what you need to get done. Can we record classroom lectures of outstanding teachers and make the resulting content available to the public, as it is a lot easier to create such recordings compared to studio recordings? Who would be who would be defining the outstanding teacher? Yeah, I can't have always outstanding teacher. No, you have to say that. It's quite difficult to find a teacher. That is actually coming from the local schools. Suppose if we get any particular university, they are defining. No, it all depends upon the other type of place. Suppose if you take a university, in a university you can pinpoint me say that this this person this particular faculty member is expertise in this particular subject. I think. Honestly speaking, Honestly. you should ask every teacher to give a lecture, their killer lecture, their favorite lecture, and record it and put it up. Because we must make yeah. teachers a lot more visible than that. Right. So it's not that we have only outstanding teachers. Make every teacher give an outstanding lecture. I'm sure that anyone can give one outstanding lecture. <laughs> but uh, are we, how many of us are teachers left in the audience and all the administrators left? So you're all administrators? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can we, should we come up with effective strategies to create textbooks for all universities meeting the different needs but from the same original resource? That's what is happening. Shall we leave this as a guess because I think we're all tired and we have to finish off one more question but I want one round of last comments from those who have the energy to do um, ideally, this, uh, this, these questions should be extended beyond a yes or no into why and into how. And I don't think we have enough expertise left over here. Okay, how should we use the social media experience in content creation? 
how to ensure that the content created in crowdsourcing meets our norms such as quality. Uh, we leave aside the second one because crowdsourcing, I can I can jot that down and send you by email. There are methods in which you can ensure crowdsourcing meets quality control. The first is have a standard operating procedure on what you define as correct. And the second is always have redundancy. So you have more than one or two persons who are debating some particular content. Thank you. Then the content would be there. That, 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 uh, so what happens the transparency of the process is assured, but I'm saying that to keep crowdsourced content, what the quality check crowdsourced, which can be done. I run an experiment on this, so I know how to do this. But the first part should be on the social media experience and content creation. Okay, this is something that is still at the very nascent stage of the research. So you have some ideas on it. For instance, if you put up a topic and ask your uh, students to no, to write a copy and give them a wiki. The wiki can give you uh, enough details on who has put what content up. So you're grading on the literature, you can already see how the content is built up. And that's an example. It's not exactly social media, but it's a field. If you're using social media, you want to come in on the social media so one on, on the social media, the emphasis should also be on writing rather than creating of visualizing because uh, creating videos or seeing videos is one thing, but able to represent it back you know, explain it back requires other skills to be taught to the students. Pure dependent on rich media is not good for the students all around the world. Only for teaching, but not for the students. Either. I don't know. Maybe you can give us an input on that. No, okay. sir, I'm, I'm not sure I agree with that entirely because again, I draw back to some project that we were doing at CRS at one point in time, where we actually found that in the creation of videos and in the creation of other information, the learning was exponentially better than it was. Learning this always will be the higher, will be higher. I am talking about analog examination or other common sectors per se. A student in 10th or 11th or in college could be very learned or can do develop a lot of great things on social media. But when he is getting ranked on a particular common exam, that translation to what write it down or answer the particular problem is an issue. Okay. Uh, I actually agree with you, uh, but I am I have a favor towards the printed material, text, rather than anything else, because you can read it, you can scan it, you can search it, both for software as well as for learning is easier. I've never liked video because you just have a token case. You have to then extract all the information. But then that becomes a personal choice, especially the kind of video. However, I would love it if I had a tool that I could generate a 3D image or an animation and generate video that goes beyond the PowerPoint that we can go in as minutes. Do we have an option here? Yeah. Okay. okay, there are two points that we want to wind up with. Uh, there were some points which Anup had put in, is that the tools of teaching in our country are missing games and simulations which are more involved than simple multiple choice and other things. There is the paradigm of constructivism which is the concept is of Wikipedia, where students learn together, and there is a lack of completely of problem-solving environments which we learn. <coughs> so education is largely road based okay, So I think that the content should be created along these points as well. I'd plug that in if you have no objection to it. Are you okay with that? Some of you went off to sleep, so I could have said anything. <laughs> Do you have any last points? No, if you can wait for another two minutes, I'll ask uh, Professor Ajmin and his class. Thank you. Uh, I would like to do my exposure uh, first. Why don't you come and address us for two minutes, and then we let people go. They won't wait immediately anyway. But now we are down to our magic number of 17, so you can't answer. Questions that are gone? Buses can't go without us. Buses are there. Thanks. Uh, so the first point, although through NAVSAT a lot of content is created, for example, in NPTS, and not all the skills are covered to the same extent, but are uh, some of the big gaps that need immediate focus. Uh, 
since morning we are hearing about the content and media content. NPTEL and NPTEL is a good thing. And NPTEL has done a lot of good work. But so far as the gap is concerned, we all understand that the what is the percentage of um, uh, engineering students of the total population of uh, uh, students of higher education? And for that matter, uh, the uh, uh, population of uh, all technical uh, courses, I think it's uh, 40 percent. The rest of it, 86 percent. The total population, it's only the 40 percent, the engineering and other technical uh, uh, students in higher education, eighty-six percent of the students' populations belongs to arts, social sciences, and other uh, uh, like uh, courses, uh, professional courses, <coughs> as well as basic yeah, yeah. science courses. Yeah, one more problem is that these courses normally don't involve computers. Normally, technical learning. Yes, yes. Are used so there is a huge gap. And I think uh, except CC, which is right now uh, involved in um, uh, creation of only 87 undergraduate subjects, the rest of the gap is it's a huge gap. As you are saying that uh, the ANU is teaching more than 400 courses. We have 600 courses, but 600 courses. What you normally yes, yes. I'm not talking about all, all 600 courses, but it's a admitted fact that the like, gap is enormous. So uh, the first questions they need to be addressed. So there is need to fill up this gap, there is need to fill up, uh, create more content for 86% of the uh, students' population in higher education, which is a huge gap. This needs to be emphasized. Sure. Sure. It's quite interesting that you know that this MHR is pushing in the NICA. The yes. focus is on DST related. The focus is more on technical uh, content creation for the uh, technical courses. I think uh, this is this that, uh, why didn't you treat that earlier? Well? She was told me that I was complaining. I had this comment by the problem. I, 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 I regretfully raise my hand for this question. Yes. No, no, no. no. That, uh, sorry, I didn't mean that. Anyway, anyway. You could have brought it up that IIT is taking all the money and... No, no, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. Which is true. No, no, no. The focus is on what one more problem. It is true. One more problem. The point is that... The point is that... The problem is that... The problem is that... And then how many students start up which is good and which is bad. Everybody is allowed to create a bad problem. The point is they have done... They have done good work. They have done quite good work. That should be appreciated. But at the same time... There is a need to put more emphasis on the content creation for the uh, yes. for yes. rest of the yes. rest of the yes. So no, I think actually this point needs to be made. See, because of this mission, the scale of grants for doing some particular work has not just gone up for one fold, ten fold, it's gone yes. up a hundred yes. fold at least. You would, nobody could get grants like 16 crores to study the pedagogy of some subjects. Yes, you are right. Okay. And to develop this content, I know what your institute has been doing because they are on the JNU on the same JNU campus land, so they are on our, they are neighbors. Yes. They've been struggling to produce these kind of courses in some tin sheds, which give them a little bit like one crore would be probably better. <laughs> so the uh, whole idea is that there's a huge amount of money in this, and it should be very localized. It should be democratized, and I was hoping that we could have got that out with the future of content creation. So again, since we are down to our magic number of 17, even though I'm a strong leftist, point number nine, where you involve a vibrant uh, private sector in the development of content, at least to augment the teachers' present skills, and also the important point of being able to teach present teachers instructional design and empower them with authoring tools to create these content.